Mike, I'm Stephen Beattie, and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. And welcome back to another episode of our League of Ireland show. I'm joined by Connor and Hayden from the Golmo podcast. If you haven't already, uh, follow them on Instagram, check them out there. Where else is your podcast? We have it on Facebook, SoundCloud, Twitter, Golmo podcast, or Gmail podcast. We'll leave all links in the bio. Um, so, two games have gone past, the weather has stopped us kind of all getting into the, the swing of things. Um, didn't really want to do a show based on the two games, so we just said we would do three games in, what have we learned, and kind of go team for team. So, starting kind of off with Bowes, they're showing a little bit of inconsistency because they beat Rovers, then they go and draw to Limerick, but a lot of people were blaming the pitch for that. Yeah. Um, <coughs> David Kyobi in one, and then uh, yeah, they they, uh, they lost down to Derry, which I was actually at, and it was one of them. Games. It was a very scrappy game, and it was just one of them where it could have went each way, either way. Sorry, obviously Bowles missed the penalty, um, Stokes missed the penalty for Bowles. But what do you what do you think from in terms of Bowles now? Do you think they've got Pats up next? How do you how do you see that? Kind of, I know you just keep it kind of. A little bit of an eye on Pats. He's have a little bit of a favouritism towards them. But how, how do you, from a Pats perspective, looking at Bowes? I can't see um, Pats really challenging Bowes a lot at Dellingham Park. Um, <coughs> I don't know. They just don't seem very confident in their ability. They don't really play a lot. So like Bowes are very, they've been inconsistent kind of so far. But I, th- I think they'll have the edge over Pats on on Friday night. Like. Yeah, I think the pitch will be in Bowes' favour as well. The uh, inch car is more of a flat surface. So you think that Pats won't be able to play the football that they, they would like to play, they'll have to go yeah, along a bit like Rovers kind of did? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, yeah. Exactly like that. And um, I think Bowles were always up for it in the Dublin Derby league. They saw that against Rovers as well. So. Yeah. And uh, the thing that I, th- I think you touched on it off air is is that the Bowles crowd do get behind the, yeah. their team quite well. The energy. Um, <clears throat> it was, like, even when they were, lo- they were losing against uh, Derry, the fans were, were driving right onto the last minute. Yeah, I mean, they always do. It was very much end to end. I know Derry hit the bar at the very, very end of the game, but balls were really pushing on for an equaliser at that point for a long time, and probably got caught in the break then because they were pushing so high. Um, like the twelfth man, the, the fans like they're just even when their side is losing, their side is down, or if their head, they're always going from the first minute to the ninetieth minute. Yeah. They create the energy around. There are a good the bunch of lads down there. Rovers fans probably won't agree with me, but uh, I like the Bowes lads their sound. And they uh, they even gave us a, a jersey there in the club shop. So shout out to Deirdre for the for the shirt. Thank you, Deirdre. Um, Bray Wanderers, uh, positive start. Uh, and they'll all draw up in Oriel Park was a pretty decent result. Then they go to lose to Pat two one. Yeah. Our mate Dean Clark man of the match uh, apparently so. Uh, and then um, they go and get spanked by Rovers, 6-0. Uh, is it doom and gloom for, for, for Bray, or are we starting to see kind of the cracks unfolding now? Or? I'd say, yeah, I don't have much hope for Bray. Just like, I was looking at a thing earlier, um, most of our players are, I think over half of them were born after 1995. So all of them are in the 93s. Like, yeah, but they still have years. Aaron Green and... Uh, Gary McCabe and stuff like that. So they still have some yeah, some players like, who are very very good. I think they, they just need to take the jail. Like, to Would you just mean like the defense and stuff? No, it's just the whole team. It's just inexperience. Yeah, so they didn't have the experience to be able to look sport or so. I don't. I feel yeah, like. Well, I think that the their goalkeeper they got from Leeds. I thought he was a very he good was sign. Played, he played against them. Um, Dock. Yeah. Can't be saved out, but can't depend on goalkeeper from the league. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's that's true, I suppose. Um, so, do you see them? They're playing against Limerick next as a bit of a six pointer. Would you say already this season? Judging on their last defeat so. each, because they both lost six nil and eight. Yeah, in the relegation battle, say yeah. You think so? Yeah, yeah it's gonna be one of them definitely going down. One, at least. Um, well, uh, at the top end of the table, anyway, Cork City, they are flying. Absolutely flying, they're on fire at the minute. Yeah. Uh, they're scoring goals for fun. Uh, it seems to me as though uh, Salier and McNamee are the key to their success. Um, I know Cummins is getting the goals, but I'm, uh, from watching highlights and stuff and looking at them, 
it seems as though Sadler and McNamee seem to be involved in most of the goals. Yeah, they get everything going. Um, they look like they're having fun out there as well. Like they're they're completely enjoying themselves. Like they they have the fire in them. They're going from the from the very beginning to the very end. They're um, Cork, Cork look very very strong. Well, if you think about it, look, in the Presidents Cup, they got four goals against Dundalk, and that was at one half. Mm. Then they got uh, he beats Pats three two, so that's another three goals. So they beat Waterford 2 0, and then was it 4 1 they beat Sligo? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they're scoring goals for fun, and they're not conceding that many. I know they did against Pat, but at that time it was 10 men. So, uh, the first game of the season as well, like, and some some like early season rust as well, probably was to deal with them two goals because like, Pat's haven't really looked very strong. But like in that game, Cork were just, you could tell that they were champions, like they just they, they took over and they won. So, I think they're solid from the front of the, front of the back as well. Like, the keeper straight to the forwards. Yeah, Nolts and uh, the they've a settled a settled team. Um unlike Dundalk, who are only setting in, but we'll get to them in a couple of minutes. But uh the thing about them is, like I know last last season they were struggling for goals as soon as Sean McGuire left. But now with Cummins there, um I know it's very early in some three games in. Yeah. But but he's making up for the goals now. But as well as that, they're chipping in with goals kinda of all over. It's not just one man, it, it seems like it's coming from everywhere. Yeah, Garoud Marissi as well is getting on the score sheet in some games too. So they're, they're getting goals from all over the park. Um, whereas in the second half of the season, they weren't doing that last year. They were struggling to score goals and stuff like that. Yeah. I think John, John Caulfield's bought very well in uh, McNamee and Brim. I think Cummins has returned then. Yeah, I think he was second he was stint. I think. Yeah, he was, he was away over in England and he went come back. Um, I don't think it, the move went too well from so he's come back and he's been flying so he got off the mark obviously against Pats uh, and then he got there was it a hat he got against Sligo yeah. one of yeah. them was a gift no, abs- absolutely absolute. yeah. sorry Coyle I know you're a fan of the show Coyle McFadden Coyle Callan McFadden sorry <laughs> uh, but yeah I, I, and, and he's the captain of Sligo as well so I wouldn't say he was too happy um, conceding that goal himself either was it, was it him who scored the penalty as well Coming no, no, sadly. Oh, sadly, Kieran, sadly. Apologies. None of me. Uh, yeah, so uh, Cork playing Dundalk next, uh, which is the next thing I was going to talk about. But uh, do you see Dundalk stopping Cork? And they did. They did have a lot of illnesses. I wasn't fun. like Dan Massey told me. Um, Dundalk happened. He was telling me that you know Dundalk had a lot of illnesses. Any excuse? No, but they had a look, like, there was a virus going around um, in the club. Cork City fans may disagree. But uh, I think it'll be a much tighter affair this time. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, especially with Hoban not coming in, coming in for the dock. Uh, he's at the, he picked up two goals, like, obviously, in the last match. And then like, the rest of the team running well as well. So. I they really settled well. into that game, in the last game, obviously, when I nailed it. Um, yeah, well, they got they, they had two they like that's what's going to get out. They, they they got two nil all draws in a row. Um, they were lucky to not lose against Rovers as well. I mean, uh, we'll get to that later on. Uh, but in terms of uh, to knock themselves, like they have a uh, man Ad- Adoran. Um, who is getting rave reviews up in Dundalk? I want to see him actually get a chance. He's in like in the in the first few games, he's only come on in like the seventy fifth minutes. Yeah, but I think I think he came in late as well though. <laughs> he did, yeah. And then they had um, I don't I don't know the name of their new striker. They saw a new striker, um, and he played against Rovers. Um, I can't remember his name. But anyway, uh, it wasn't Hoban. It was a different. It was a different newer striker that they only recently signed. Like quite he's Deadline, the newest sign they have, but. Um, just, just like all over. They, they have Cheva Dukas, Carlos got it right. Boom! Cheva Dukas, uh, he told me on Facebook how to pronounce his name, so <laughs> I was a bit worried for a while that I couldn't pronounce it, but we got it. Uh, but, you know, and they've got Hoban, and they've Hoban, sorry, then they've Duffy, you know, um, Benson. They got uh, Dan Cleary off uh, Birmingham as well. Yeah. He's on the right so. Jamie McGraw looks, looks good for them as well. I mean, they're. They're going forward. They look a real threat. I think. Definitely I think. I think. I think against Cork it can be a very, very, very tight affair. And uh, I. They probably cancel each other out. That's all I can see happening. Just cancel out. Yeah, probably one all or nil. Maybe even just the one. I'm gonna go. 
really, really, um, just because they're scoring goals for fun, I think for 2-2. Two, two. That's a show. I, I, you definitely, I, I definitely can't see anybody coming out with victors or losers, can you? Like, honestly, can you uh, lose Well, being up at the President's Cup game, you know, it was 2-0 to Dundalk at half-time. Cork came out and were flying. Like, absolutely. McNamee was firing down the way. Sadly, I scored a peach. Do you know what I mean? And then they were just whipping balls in. Some of the goals they scored were unbelievable. Yeah. I thought, you now, uh, um, I thought their keeper could have done better. Was it Rodgers? Yeah, I'm sorry, Gary Rodgers, yeah. But uh, I thought he could have he'd done better for Carl Shepard's goal. But you probably couldn't have seen it because it's, it's Ireland and they don't like to let people see the coverage of our games and the biggest <laughs> teams. But uh, what can you do? Uh, Dundalk, though, um, how do you see them now for the next kind of couple of games? Do you see them kicking on? Do you see them drawing, stalemates? What, what, what is. No, I'll tell you. Tell you me how he's. Get a few wins, I'd say, under our belt. Just the team seems settled. So, yeah. As I can see, the next game definitely being a stalemate. This game? Yeah, like Dundalk and. Uh, You're not agreeing with two all draw, no? Oh, but like, definitely a draw, and anyway, no victor. So, like, moving beyond next game, I can see. Them going on and getting like a good run of games going after the court game, yeah, yeah, like beyond that, like once them two deal with each other, I can see the two of them both going on runs, yeah. By the way, for any of the fans that are watching, we will be at that game on Friday night in Oriel Park. So if you do see us, come over and say hello, and don't be afraid to, you know, I don't know if you want to be on our Snapchat story or whatever, uh, come over, give us a shout, don't be afraid, just don't harass us too much. Um, we actually skipped over Derry by mistake because we were talking so much about Cork and uh, Dundalk. So, uh, Derry. <laughs> I um, go on. I was, I was some seriously strong feelings about Derry. Like, Air them. We're, we're, we're three games into the season, and Derry have eleven yellow cards in three games. Like, it's like they're. It, it's anti football, it feels like. I know like, that, that term has been thrown around a lot lately, especially in the Premier League, stuff like that, but it feels like it's anti football, especially in that game against Bowes. They were just kicking kicking players and, like, just. Not necessarily. Like, just. They're very rigid, so it's. They're, um, mm. they're, it's been a very up and down start. Them. Mm. So what were we going to say, Tig? Oh, I was just going to say that um, it, it doesn't seem like they even have a game plan. It's just go out, kick a few players, see what happens. Yeah, call for the best. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, seemed, it seemed to work for them against Bowles, didn't it? <laughs> Exactly, it did. But, uh, yeah. like, they had two, two defeats before that, so I, I suppose it was vital for them to bounce back yeah. uh, versus Bowles. Like, they obviously lost to Waterford. And um, it was a slow guy that got beat by as well. 2 yeah. yeah. so, so, you know, they got beat by them too. So it was vital for them to obviously bounce back. Uh, do you see them coming on a bit, of, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a run or a bit of a revival? Or no, can you see them keep a run going? No, I think they were very lucky against Bowles. <clears throat> Bowles had a penalty late right on, they missed. Yeah, but they also had the crossbar too, didn't they? So. That happened. They had their chances, uh, both sides. You know, that game could have went either way. Yeah. I suppose they got lucky, but your man Kenny Shields just seems to love moaning about fucking everything, doesn't he? He's just a moaning fucker. Um, just, yeah. Kenny, if you're watching, just fucking shut up moaning, mate. Just, just get on with it. I don't know, he's moaning about the pitch or something, I don't know. Yeah. He's always moaning about something anyway, you know. It's always something to be on about. This is it, this is it. Um, moving on to Limerick. <laughs> uh, a positive start, <laughs> first game of the season, uh, beating Sligo. <coughs> but then... They are blown away. I don't know, they got a draw against Bowes. That was a decent result. Uh, one also. It's been, a, it's been a bit of a mixed start for them. I mean, they went from win, draw, to a thump against uh, Dundalk. Is it that Dundalk just have much better players or is it that Limerick are struggling? Well, I uh, think... Uh, are they struggling now? Because it could be just the one game. It could be just the one off. I reckon the snow probably had something to do with it as well. The conditions? Yeah. Um, that, that pitch was actually still covered in snow during the game, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, they just didn't turn up for the match. I don't, I don't think it didn't look like they were didn't, didn't want to play. After the first few goals, the heads went down. So... That's done dark, but it's explosive from the beginning. Like they, it's like Limerick weren't ready for, it, especially yeah. the weather, and like felt like they weren't warmed up properly or something. Or like I don't know. But um, uh, we actually didn't even give Hope a mention. Uh, when we were talking about Dundalk mm. he was he was unreal against them. Lit the fire up. Uh, lit the yeah, him again, him like Cummins again, you know. Yeah. So um, 
<laughs> it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see them two going head to head. But anyway, uh, Limerick. It's, it's hard to kind of to see. I, I suppose you're gonna have to just wait. Um, they're actually their next game is actually against Derry, so it'll be interesting to see. Mm. Um, what kind of way that goes? But they probably. I'm sorry, not Derry, uh, Bray. So six pointer, as yeah. we were saying earlier on. Um, who do you fancy? I don't have much hope for Bray. Probably maybe two 0 Limerick. I was going to say the exact same thing. Like Bray are just nowhere. They're not. They're nowhere to be seen. But Bray is still scoring goals. They're conceding as well, though. What's all Limerick do concede? Oh, well, they're looking dangerous. They, they were looking not to be Dundalk. Then um, <coughs> they, they, uh, they obviously scored then against Pats, but they didn't score against was it Rovers when they get beat 6 0. Mm. So I, I, I know I said they're scoring, but they're making the chances. That they should have beaten Dundalk by the chances they've seen on Soccer Republic anyway. Yeah, mm. um, yeah. yeah so on to Shamrock Rovers. Uh, Again, a uh, bit of a mixed uh, start for them. They lost the balls, then the game that we were refused entry for, so <laughs> whatever, trying to promote the league and get refused. For. Thanks, guys. Um, although their fans, in, to their credit, were very good to um, ourselves. Uh, so credit to them and Dundalk's fans, too. Uh, but, you know, from what I've seen in the highlights, the, the brightest spark of the game was Mille's shot and hit off the post. Um, Seemed to save Dundalk, like, yeah, that was a great strike. And, uh, you know, had that gone in, we are talking about a loss and two wins, and they'd be right back on the track that they want to be on. But in terms of the 6 the, the six nil against Bray, they seem to, again, like Dundalk, take their frustrations out on kind of a lesser team to them. Yeah. All due respect, Bray fans. Yeah. Um, what a goal, Graham Bolt, though. Oh, yeah. What a goal. Left foot, you know, off the crossbar, how you know. Peach. Yeah, but well, between him, Mille and um, Carr up top, he looks very dangerous. Yeah. What What's your thoughts on him? We we'll get to Mille in a minute because he was brilliant as well. I really like the look at him. He's so um, tricky and quick, and he seems very like, intelligent as well. And like he's bringing the enthusiasm back in, like into the Rover side. It, it felt like he was. I don't know. He was very exciting to watch. Um, yeah, he plays he plays some very exciting football. Yeah, he just seems to be dangerous whenever he gets the ball. I was looking to make something happen. Like. Yeah, and then he got his goal obviously in the end. Uh, but Mille, I thought, was very, very good. Um, Pulling strings. What? Pulling strings. Exactly, yeah. And, I mean, well, they've got a bad like side when you look at it, but mm. my God, they were turned over by balls. Like, um, but it, as you were saying, maybe maybe that was just down to the pitch. Yeah, I reckon the fact that they, they, they couldn't play the football that they wanted to play, because judging by the, the goals that they scored against Bray, you know, it was quite expansive. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and and and, uh, and entertaining. As I was unfortunate with that the dark game, because like in the in the, in the last few meetings between the Rovers and the dark, like it, it was minimum of three goals per game in the last like four games, and in the There's last game, staff, you know. <laughs> and in the last game, there was it was, it was finished four two all in Tallis Stadium, like so it was it was just boring that. And upsetting that finishing it all, um, but like Rovers still look excited. I wish I could give you more info on the game, but sure, look, I don't know. I only know what the outside of the stadium looks like uh, <laughs> from that night. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> just try and share it at the studio, I'd say. Not them, but sure, look. Who, 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 if anyone's watching, they they know who's who's playing. It's not us. But anyway, uh, their next game is actually against Derry. So how do you see that playing out? I reckon it'd be a comfortable win. For offers, for offers. Yeah, I think so. They, they, they just look dangerous. I just had melee car and the uh, book. I'm I'm farm like so. I can't see the third defense stopping them. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think Gary Shaw needs to get off the mark as well. I don't think it'll be a very comfortable win to be honest with you. Derry will probably just kick them and kick them and kick them and kick them again, and then Rovers will eventually score. But like uh, I feel like Rovers. like the Derry team should just go into the USA or something. Yeah, they should. Like they should actually just enter. Cause Leg kicks. It's no strategies now. Oh, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I feel like Rovers will come out with victory in that with a victory in that game. Um, because they're just they're too, as Connor said, they're just too dangerous. Like they're too, they're very excellent, enthusiastic. Mm-hmm. Okay, on to another Rovers, Slugger Rovers. The bit of red having a bit of a mixed start themselves. Um, yeah, 
like their first game they lose to Limerick um, so they won versus Derry yeah and then uh, and then they lost to Cork Fong. that wasn't their fault though was it but Cork were just one of the goals was we already reflected yeah, on we won't go back into that <laughs> but anyway um, I just think that's a Cork I just are on fire at the minute and, and, and no one's really catching them yeah. But nobody can contain them. Nobody can contain them. Yeah, they score like Morgan's still scoring goals, but the defensively is where they are struggling and and, and leaking the goals. And yeah, um, maybe it was just a blip against them. Um, Cork, maybe it was just a blip. But uh, they're up against Waterford next, and that's um, Paddy McLean's all team. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Paddy McLean likes our posts on Instagram. Thanks. Follows you. Yeah. Follows us too. Sound. Uh, how was that back ball treat you by the way? <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, like Sligo. How do you see their season going? Or is it too early to say? It? I think it might be like the, the, it's barely even got gone, and they barely even got gone. Like um, I don't. Know I can't see them beating Waterford. Anyway, no, yeah, definitely, definitely not. Um, yeah, as you said, Morgan is the only bright spark really. I think you just need to get the service into him and. Should do our inside of the defence. Yeah, I think everyone was was expecting him to do the business anyway, so it, it's just one of them, isn't it? Really. So on to your favourite team, St Patrick's Athletic. Uh, another mixed start. Yeah. Um, probably not the start that Pat's fans would have hoped. I don't think this would have, you know, we know we touched on Cork already, um, but that you might have felt a little bit unlucky to lose to them, no? Yeah, it was obviously uh, they had the man advantage. They were taking it. They were taking advantage of it, like, and um, get a penalty show at the end of the match as well. Maybe should have been given. Um, what's the what's the head nod about? Should have, should have. Yeah, you said it should have been. No offense, a lot of shouting and all, but like, <laughs> he did go down very easy in the box. So I don't know. Um, there's just something about Pats this season where they're just taking ages to get going in games, and it's like they're like they're only playing like seventy minutes. It takes ages to get going in the games, then they just drift off towards the end of the games, which like leaves other teams just able to capitalise on that. Like. Well, I think it's with, with Pats, it's, it's just because they try to play football and the pitches that yeah. we have over here just aren't really suited to that. Yeah. Not that I'm making excuses for them, because I actually really like Pats and I, I like the team, friends some of the players on their team as well. So I, I like seeing them do well, but it's, it's hard when. You know, they they're going out, but it seems like they've just been they've just been unlucky so far. I know they were comfortably beaten against Waterford, <laughs> but uh, we get to Waterford next. But outclassed. Uh, yeah, they were just they were a bit outclassed by them. But maybe it is is it their squad? I, you you go to their games, so like yeah, I'd say th- there was a lot of new signings made. Like obviously Madden doing a. Clark Clark Ryan as well, wasn't he? Dino, yeah, yeah, um, Keith Teeden problems. Yeah, they probably just need to settle. And, um, kind of similar to the Dumb Dark, then you think? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. More, they need to settle in more so that Pats, because like, they're even last season. Well, Colin Burns flying. Yeah, two goals in the season. You can't just rely on him, like, you need the whole team to be performing. Well, Dean's been, Dino's been doing quite well this, as well, on the left. I think it's just the defence, really. That's, sort of, that's the problem, like. I don't think they're. I, I, I don't think they're a million miles from where from where they should be. I think just re- results haven't gone their way yet. And I think maybe they'll start going a bit of a bit of a good run now. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. Well, like going into Friday's game, there's an immense pressure on. I feel like. Well, yeah, they bow's next, so. Exactly. Yeah. Is um, there any confidence about that? No. So it's, <laughs> no. it's in daily mode, doesn't it? Not far enough. Yeah, it's in daily mode. Yeah. Um, like, like, there's a few players who just need to show up on the day and they need to stay they need to get going right from the beginning um, in particular like Ian Birmingham and, yeah, and uh, Conan Bourne hopefully they get off the mark right from the beginning yeah uh, well like um, well, what are your predictions for this? 1-1 one, 1-1 one. Oh, you're not confident no I'm not confident at all no. I'm not confident but I'm going to be very optimistic about this and say 2-1 Pats hopefully even though it is against Daily Mount and you know, the fans, 12th man and all that. I'm going to go... I'm going to go 2-1 to Pats. Sorry, Bows fans. 
But yeah, I'm gonna go two one Pats. I just feel like they've got the more um, just the, the, their attack is a lot better uh, yeah. for scoring goals. Um, not that I think both sides it'll be it'll be a tough battle, yeah. but I just think that they've got the the bit of a, uh, a bit of an edge over over balls in terms of just they score more goals. Um, whereas Bowles have been struggling to score goals. I know they can score three against Rovers, but two of them are defend defender. You know, from yeah. set piece, the rest of the game. Although Dini Corcoran is due a goal, so I hope he scares and come back and haunts Pats. Um, come on, Dini. Short of goals, anyway. Short of goals. Sorry. Short of goals. Like, like there's no way it's. Like, You'd hope so. You'd hope so. Um, are you scoring that yourselves? I will be. Yeah. Um, are you? I'm not sure yet. So if you see Connor around, yeah, give him a shot. Yeah, tell him you, you liked him on, on, on the show and you're going to listen to his Golden Mouth podcast. Or if you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Not to worry if you didn't. Um, then moving on to the last team, then I had Waterford. They've come up and they've been flying. I know they lost to Cork. 2 0 is a respectable win against Cork, in my opinion. Considering what they've been doing so far. Yeah, and they beat Pats and they've beaten Derry, um, which have both shown to be kind of tricky uh, teams mm. so far. But. How do you think now they are going to do? Are they going to push on? It seems that Bastion here is the heartbeat of the team. He just makes it a pick. Um, score a world against Pats. What if the fans just love to go on about? But uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. But uh, where's. Um, what's, what's your opinion on Waterford? How do, how do you see them doing now? Do you see them going on a bit of a run? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Um, They've got Sligo next. Yeah, Sligo haven't been doing great really, so... And they can see him, but uh, Akinani's due a goal. Yeah, and he, uh, he's, he's actually been doing well for a while for big... He just hasn't been scoring, but scored, he's been yeah. doing well. Um, and then Hulahan and O'Halloran are doing quite well as yeah. well. So, predictions versus Slug? Trino. To water? Yeah. No Adam Morgan to score, no? No, I don't think so. Uh, I'm thinking I'm thinking 2-1 as well. I'm thinking 2-1 victors of who uh Warfers. Um say I'll say Paddy McLean will keep up Adam Morgan. Paddy McLean, if uh, your mate, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you'd be happy to hear that. Whether he does it or not is a different thing. Um I'd say it'd be a more of a tighter affair. I'd say probably two one to Waterford. Um I think we might be a bit harsh on Sligo. But sir if we're being a bit harsh on anyone you can let us know in the comments. But uh, no, I just there's something about Waterford, they've come up and they've clicked really fast. Like They had a lot of new signings too. I think it's t- probably to do with the full-time football as well. Yeah, Just maybe, but, but Dundalk and, and Rovers are on the full-time football yeah, team. Yeah, true, yeah. So like, you're saying that, do, do you think that maybe Waterford could come up in the next few years and potentially be toilet Sanders, or? I think that's their aim. Yeah. I think that's the, the project aim is, is, is to do that. I think they've... More attention to detail over there. Well, they've got some. I mean, look at the signings that they made. They, they, they've got like a spine of the team going on from 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 the keeper, Noel Corbett, Webster, Heary, Akinari. Like, there's a good spine of the team there, like you know. So that's the intent. And, and they've got good players around it, but it's, it's the main like it's the main spine of the team is quite strong, mm-hmm. and you know they can only strengthen it from here or next season. Yeah. So it'll be key to see if they if they finish in a kind of high high enough position and then go from there. It's very exciting to be a Watford fan if you're a fan of Watford. Yeah, but they've got a great stadium, a great setup. Like all the the past fans that went down to the RSC were very complimentary of the mm. facilities and stuff like that. So hopefully they, hopefully they win. I'm only the ones to watch the season. That's any more challenge for Europe. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I agree. Um, well, that's been our uh, episode three. Thanks very much for coming on, lads. Thanks for having us. Um, if you agree or disagree with any of our comments, uh, leave them in the comments below. And uh, as well as that, uh, we're starting to we want to start answering your questions. So we want to hear more from the audience. So if you fire in some questions, uh, we'll be happy to discuss them, or some topics, we'll be happy to discuss them as well. Um, as always, uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's all the same to it. So thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.